Uh, speaking of Wittenberg, uh, we're going to ask the president of, of Wittenberg uh, to come on here, uh, Dr. Franson. Um, doctor, thank you very, very much for uh, joining us. Uh, you have a, a, a beautiful, lovely campus and uh, with, with great students and faculty, and uh, we want to just kind of find out how things are going for you and uh, what, what you're seeing and, and how you're dealing with everything. Well, thank you very much, Governor, for uh give me a chance to share our story. Um, as the governor indicated, our, our dashboard is available at our website, uh, wittenberg.edu slash together is where our COVID information is. And, and together is really the you know, description of uh, how we've approached this as a community, uh, how we plan to bring students back to campus and the fact that we've just had great cooperation in Springfield uh, from the Clark County Combined Health District and Mercy Hospital both. Um, we saw our case numbers increase from two, one of which was resolved last Monday to 22. And we're doing our own contact tracing. Uh, we're finding that uh, because of our tight knit community, uh, the our staff who are doing the contact tracing uh, can, can quickly make connections and, and get students to talk to them because they're comfortable and familiar. And we have a daily meeting with our uh, combined health district and the physicians that have been advising us. And one of the things that, that really worried uh, the health district in particular was they were finding from our reporting uh, contact, close contacts of 10 to 15 per case whereas typically they find two to three co close contacts per case. So, you know, concerned about that, um, we have been doing uh, symptomatic testing and uh, we're only able to start doing any asymptomatic testing in the middle of last week with Mercy. And to, to get a handle on, on how our community was really doing, we, we wanted to pause the in-person instruction and uh, have an opportunity to test a larger swath of our community so we can really get a better picture. And uh, fortunately, uh, with help from the local health district, your office governor, we had a testing event on campus yesterday. And uh, hopefully by the end of the week, we're gonna have a better sense of, of where we really are. Well, it's interesting, uh, Mr. President, that you're doing your own tracing. That sounds like it's working pretty well. Uh, and uh, also interesting, uh, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about the contacts because when, and maybe explain how that tracing is done so that anybody who's watching this doesn't maybe un understand the, the contacts. Uh, but, you know, it is, it is interesting. Uh, it's a pretty high number uh, of contacts per, per student. So if you can kind of run through that a little bit. Sure. So uh, our contact tracing is being done by our staff. Our, our athletic trainers in particular have really stepped up to be involved in that. Um, they're, their workload's a little quieter right now because we don't have uh, intercollegiate athletics going on. And we have a lot of athletes who they know. And so we, you know, we've activated them, gotten them trained to do that contact tracing. And you know, they're, they're very busy. Um, and what we're finding with the, the contacts they're reaching out to, um, again, it's, it's social circles, as the, the governor said. It's not spread that's happening in the classroom it's not spread that's happening in the dining hall. Um, it's really the residence units and uh, social gatherings that are, are driving our challenges. Um, we have about 60 houses adjacent to campus that anywhere from three to five students live in. And so we're fortunate in that, you know, we aren't seeing spread in our dormitories. Um, we're seeing the spread in those residential housing units uh, neighbors to neighbors, um, block to block, um, but not so much in our, our residence halls. So you know, we've been able to quarantine people uh, on a smaller scale than we might if it were in our dorms. And what's the plans going forward, doctor? You've, you've kind of paused, you're, you're going remote at this point, I think you said. Right, so we're, we're in a two week pause with in-person instruction. We asked students to stay on campus um, as advised by, by your office and uh, Dr. Fauci. Um, I wish I could say all of them did. Some of them went home, but uh, the majority of them are here with us. Um, we're continuing to offer support services to students 
we, again, we've got great support from the local health district in terms of taking care of our, our cases, and we're up to 76 active cases as of today, um, taking care of this, those students who are, who are in quarantine, making sure they get meals, uh, making sure we're checking up on them. And you know, again, the test results from this broader testing are really gonna, gonna help us see if, if the work we were doing um, had captured the majority of activity on our campus, then great. Uh, but if the tests show that uh, even with those efforts, we were missing a lot of what was going on on campus, uh, we'll have to, to rethink just how long we pause the in-person instruction. Uh, we had one of your students on a Skype yesterday, uh, Chancellor Gardner and I uh, did, um, and we had students from actually all over the state. And one, one of the students uh, made a kind of interesting point. Uh, the student said, you know, what's important is that there still be stuff to do on campus because if university is not sponsoring things to do on campus that is in fact safe, um, the student's perspective was people will go off and do the, sort of do their own thing. So that's a, you, you, got a, you got a tough balance there. You know, you want to keep the social distancing, keep people wearing masks, but it was, a, it, it was interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. And I don't know if you have any reaction to that uh, or, or, or not, but it was, I found it to be an interesting comment. Yeah, and, and you know, we recognized that uh, from last spring, that engagement was going to be really important. And la last spring, as we went to all remote instruction, you know, staying engaged with our students virtually and, and otherwise keeping faculty and staff engaged. And as we brought students back to campus this fall, you know, having opportunities for them to engage that were structured and safe uh, was really important to us. And, you know, we've had a couple of cornhole tournaments, which are, uh, you know, a good way to get people together, but keep them distanced. Um, we've had uh, some uh, car races. We brought in a company that, that did car races on the, uh, the main uh, uh, quad in our, on our campus. Um, and we've tried to, to, to do what we can to create structured activities, safe activities. We also have, uh, have had a bunch of uh, pick up and take home craft projects that seem to be a hit with students. And we've uh, just this week had a pick up and take home cooking project. Our students who are in those houses have their own kitchens. And so, you know, we're doing uh, what we can. Uh, we can't do that 24 seven. Um, we have to rely on the students to mask up um, what, what we say at Wittenberg is stay a tiger apart. Uh, tiger's a little bit bigger than six feet, so we, we ask him to stay a tiger apart and, you know, practice good hygiene and, and really limit gatherings. And, you know, what we're hearing from the health district is the, the distancing and masking are, and duration of whatever contact they have are, are just so important. And, you know, I think we're going to redouble the efforts to, to make sure students understand that. I think they've learned a lot about how important that is just from our experience over the last 10 days.